My name is Peter Sidwell. I've been a chef for over 25 years now, and I love nothing more than cooking with great British ingredients. The Guild of Fine Food have asked me to create some recipes using British charcuterie. I'm going to be cooking with brussola today, which is a beautiful dried cured beef. Uh, it's delicious, it's intense, and it's amazing. And it's a wonderful ingredient to cook with. Um, and we're going to create a big, beautiful crostini for the family. A great big one that's got massive impact, tastes delicious, got some incredible ingredients to go with it. But the star of the show is what you will top it with, our wonderful brussola. So it's very intense. Um, a little bit goes a long way. So when you're in your farm shop or your deli and you're having a look round, you know, don't, don't be worried about, um, you know, just getting a few bits because it is really intense and delicious. So let's get started. I have got a wonderful big ciabatta here. We're only going to use half of it for this, but we'll use the other half for something else, don't worry. So I'm just going to cut it horizontally all the way through. Okay. And we'll go with this one. See, you can see all the open texture on this bread, and that's why we're using it. So a little bit of oil on there, not a lot. Just enough to help it kind of toast. And then just rub it in using your hands, and that'll help it crisp up. So I've got a nice big grill on here getting hot. You can hear it's hot, it's preheated, and I'm just getting it lovely and toasted and crisp. So while the ciabatta is toasting up, we're gonna make this wonderful salad, okay? So first things first, I've got this amazing vinegar from a guy called Andy Harris, he runs the vinegar shed. Unbelievable vinegars in that place. Um, so look out for it in your farm shop or deli. So I want two or three tablespoons of this vinegar. Uh, and what we're going to do is kind of, we're going to take a red onion and we're going to pickle it a little bit, okay? Um, and kind of intensify all the characteristics that you get from a red onion. So we want it tangy and we want it slightly sweet. So that's what we're going to do by pickling it. So I'm just going to slice the onion really thinly because this is a really quick light pickle. It's not a heavy pickle at all. So as thinly as you can possibly manage. And if you need to use a mandolin or a slicer, it's fine. I like to use a knife. I've been using it every day for my whole career. So I can cut them nice and thin. Okay. So half an onion is going to be okay for this one. So we'll put that there. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to salt these a little bit first, actually. So I've got some sea salt. And then all I'm going to do is just kind of mix the salt and mix the onions together. And what the salt's going to do is start to draw the water straight out of the onions and the vinegar in. Okay? So into the vinegar. All of it. All the salt and everything straight in. And then get your hands in and just scrunch the onions like you did with the salt in the vinegar. And that's just going to speed up the process of pickling. Lovely. And you can kind of see the onions have started to just break down just that little bit, which is exactly what we want. Okay, great. So, take those onions, give them a squeeze, and then just put them on the side of your chopping board, okay? Bear with me a minute. There's method in my madness, I promise. Okay, so now that we've got those sort of semi-pickled red onions. We've now got some lovely vinegar with flavour in it, but we're going to add to that. So, because we're using this wonderful brussola, um, we're going to make a really nice dressing that would kind of work with it, okay? So I'm going to go whole grain mustard. I'm going to add a teaspoon into there. I like whole grain for this because it's not too strong and it, it still allows everything else to kind of do its thing. So. And then I've got some really delicious honey. Um, and that is going to just kind of sweeten it. And it's like half a teaspoon there. There we go. And also what honey does, what honey does when you're making a salad dressing is it kind of, it bridges the gap between the vinegar and the oil and it just harmonizes it. 
So, a little whisk together. Now, two thirds more oil. I'm using olive oil today. Um, just to bring a really nice dressing together. Okay, that's it. We'll do a little, little season, not a lot. Because we've got some big flavors in this. Okay, lovely. Right, let's have a little taste. Best bit of the job. Mm. Good, we're good. It's got a nice tang to it, but I quite like that really tangy dressing. Okay? So we'll put that to one side. Now, I've got some lovely watercress here. That's going to work beautifully, but not until the end. Really, really important. When you're making a lovely salad and it's got green leaves in it, right at the end of those leaves go in. So I've got some lovely tomatoes here. I've got two different types. So I've got some nice, beautiful vine tomatoes, and then I've got some delicious little sort of San Mizzano cherry tomatoes. And we're gonna chop them up differently because they're a different kind of tomato. So we slice up these. So the big salad vine tomatoes, they just get sliced up. What I'm gonna do is just give them a little squeeze, okay? I want a bit of that water out, okay? I don't want it too dilute. Just a tiny squeeze, not much, and then in they go. And then the other tomatoes, all we're gonna do is just slice them in half, because these are really beautiful and sweet, okay? So you don't, want, you don't need to do too much to these. And then we will just lift those up, pop those in. Okay. So, right, so tomatoes all chopped up, okay? We're gonna take our gently pickled red onions, we're gonna add those. They're gonna be absolutely amazing. This is gonna change the way that you make tomato and red onion salads, okay? So we'll give that a good mix. Beautiful. Okay, right. The brussola as well, it's really important actually that when you kind of, when you're making things with, you know, charcuterie, let it warm up a little bit to room temperature because, you know, if you eat this straight out of the fridge, it will just have no flavour. Whereas a little bit like cheese, this, if you let them warm up just a little bit more, you start to get more and more flavour. And honestly, if I just do this, take a little bit of watercress, a little bit of tomato and onion and, you know, as a chef, when you're cooking, this is how you taste stuff. You taste it in context. You wrap it all up in a lovely little piece and then you just try it. Mm. It's so good. Such a good combination, but so simple. Okay. I got a couple more things to do and then we'll be ready. Let's have a little look at this bread. Oh. That is looking divine, okay? It's just getting that lovely toast in. I really enjoy using these grills where you can actually see what's going on. Okay, so let's add our watercress, but only just sit it on the top, okay? Don't mix it in, really important. Good, right, so take our ciabatta. Look at that, looks amazing. Already, um, my mouth's watering. What I've got here is, is something that I do a lot of, okay? So we take bulbs of garlic and some uh, vegetable oil or rapeseed oil, and we just put like 20 cloves of garlic. Uh, sorry, we'll start again. We'll start again, right. Start right again, right at the beginning. <laughs> okay. So just pop the watercress and just leave it on the top of your salad. Don't mix it in until you're just about to serve. Right, let's look at our ciabatta. Look at that. Lovely and toasted and crisp. Smells amazing already. Now, one thing to add to this that's just going to take it to the next level, okay? Uh, this is something that I do quite a lot of. Uh, in my kitchens, both at home and in the cookery school. Um, we take bulbs of garlic, maybe 20 at a time, put them in a big roasting tray, half a pint of vegetable oil, put them in the oven, 150 degrees for at least an hour. And then we cool them down and we pop them into jars, okay? And what you end up with is this incredibly rich, delicious, 
sweet, sticky garlic. Okay, and it is just immense, and it is delicious. Okay, so what you do is, you just cut the root off, and you can squeeze oh, the garlic, the whole thing. Imagine it's like a tube of toothpaste, and just squeeze it. Don't worry about the oil, because that's just gonna all seep in there, lovely. Okay, and then we will just get the back of a spoon, and we just spread it, okay? Spread it all the way along. There we go. So you don't need butter on this. This is just gonna take it to the next level. And your brussola will love this, I promise, okay? So, and you sh immediately, because it's warm and it's toasted, the bread, the garlic's hit it, and now I'm just getting this waft of roasted sweet garlic. Ah, it's just amazing. Now, and only now, when you mix this, okay? So we start to mix the tomatoes, the watercress, really gently. Just kind of stir it all up. Don't mix it heavily. Just, and then start to lift. Don't worry about the juices as well, because we've chosen a ciabatta. It's gonna capture all the juices and all the flavor. Okay, so we'll grab that, pop it on. Ugh, looks amazing. It's the perfect thing for something like brisola, this. Okay, right, there we go. And then take these juices, pour them on. Do not ever leave the juices in the bowl. Okay, give them a squeeze. Oh, 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 you've made an amazing dressing. Make sure you capture it all. Okay, so we've got our wonderful brussola now. British, made with this produce on these shores. You know, with people who've got real skill and understanding. I think it's wonderful industry. You know, we've got a hundred different producers now in this country. That's tw that's like way more than we've had. Over the past 10 years, it's doubled, which I think is a wonderful sign that this part of the industry is alive and well, and consumers and customers are enjoying these wonderful products. It's great that we can go over to the continent and see what other people do, bring it back, and apply it to our, our own wonderful produce. So, just take your brisola and just dot it around, lift it, peel it apart, let that temperature get up, because now we've got a massive surface area, and then it's just gonna take all those wonderful flavors. It's gonna work beautifully. And just sort of prod it and poke them in little gaps that you can see, look, there's some there. Let's pop that in there. Beautiful. Let's tuck that under a tomato. Ah, looks good. Looks really good. Pleased with this. We'll take a few more little pieces of that lovely peppery watercress there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna finish it. A little bit of black pepper, because beef loves black pepper in my opinion. And then I've got some um, British pecorino cheese, okay? Which I think is wonderful. And I'm just gonna give it a little grating on there. Not too much, just a touch. And there we go, that is it. A beautiful crostini topped with British brussola made on these shores with a lovely tomato, pickled red onion and watercress salad. What could be more delicious? So I'm just gonna chop that right down the middle. And there we go. Look at that, beautiful. You've got those wonderful tomatoes, amazing dressing, peppery watercress, and that brussola is just so happy to be with all those flavors. It's a really simple, easy dish to do. A great way to use British charcuterie. You know, if you don't want brussola, try something else. There are so many different types out there in your farm shops and delis. Over 100 producers, that's amazing. There is no way that you can't find a great local charcuterie producer and do something like this.